For a long time, ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to explore space and help expand the human frontier. And I've always been interested in science, and knew I wanted to be a scientist since I was about 12 years old. As a teenager, studying space represented a chance to understand our place, and my place, in the universe. When I left for college at MIT, planning to study aerospace engineering, I was ready for liftoff. But what happened next surprised me. I discovered neuroscience. As an undergraduate, I took introductory courses in psychology and neuroscience from passionate professors who loved what they taught. And the facts and topics they discussed were just so amazing. Like how the patient HM couldn't form new memories after having his hippocampus removed to treat his epilepsy. Or how there are more synaptic connections in your brain than there are stars in the Milky Way galaxy. And it seemed like every time I learned something new about the brain, I had 10 more questions. Questions that science couldn't answer yet. See, that's what really drew me into neuroscience. I discovered that studying neuroscience is a chance to understand ourselves. It presented these huge questions about what it means to be human. Are we really the only intelligent beings? Will we ever be able to pinpoint the seat of consciousness Can we in figure the out what exactly makes me, me? Through my undergraduate courses, I kept getting more and more interested in the microscopic unseen processes that make up our brain. Ultimately, my curiosity about how our brain develops led me to pursue a PhD in neuroscience, and I'm now in my fifth year at UC San Diego. And now, every day, I get to work on those big questions. For my thesis work, I'm studying the roles of astrocytes, cells that make up about half of all the glia in the brain, and provide support and resources to neurons. Even though I didn't plan on studying astrocytes when I got to grad school, I absolutely love my research. Astrocytes are fascinating because we know so little about them. While scientists have spent decades identifying different types of neurons and their connections in the brain, it's only been in the last 20 years that glial cells have gotten much attention at all. For example, we know that astrocytes are important for helping neurons form connections with one another. When neurons are grown with astrocytes in a dish, they form five times as many synapses as they do without astrocytes. But we're still figuring out why astrocytes are important for forming those connections. And in fact, that's the main focus of my research. I'm trying to figure out how the proteins astrocytes spit out influence the ways that neurons grow and connect with one another, and how changes in those proteins caused by genetic mutations can lead to problems with growth and communication. Even though a lot of my work would seem boring to many other people because I spend so much time setting up for experiments, counting cells, and dealing with mice, I love working on this question every day. See, neuroscience is rewarding. It's like I'm at the edge of the vast expanse of human knowledge, and I'm carefully chipping away at this small question. But that small question is connected to a big one. Because if I can figure out how genetic mutations change how astrocytes function, it might open the door to new therapies for treating genetic neurodevelopmental disorders. Someday, the work that I do might help people who are struggling with serious medical conditions. It really is a kind of exploration, not on the surface of another planet, but of the human mind. I am boldly going where no one has gone before. And at the end of long days in the tissue culture room or analyzing data, sometimes there are moments of discovery. I get excited because I found a really interesting protein in my data set, or discovered that my candidate testing worked. These are moments when I am literally the only person in the whole world who knows a new thing about the brain. And that's pretty amazing. That's a huge part of why we started this YouTube channel in the first place. Because I wanted to have the chance to share all of those amazing moments with you. I can't share my own research yet, but I love getting to talk about neuroscience and helping other people understand their brains, and therefore themselves, just a little bit better. Thanks for watching this episode of Neurotransmissions. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to learn more about your brain in the future. Until our next transmission, I'm Ali Astrocyte, over and out.